What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've got a Chicago Bulls and Golden State Warriors uh, game reaction in which the Chicago Bulls, the comeback Bulls once again, fight their way down from a 19 point deficit to actually, I believe, come cl as close to four points uh, in terms of winning this game, or four points down, but... A very strong, I guess, surgeons from the Golden State Warriors late on in that game. And of course, some really stupid decisions by the Chicago Bulls, as we've come to expect in crunch time, leads this team to actually lose yet again another game out west. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking about this game reaction, my kind of emotions after this game and stuff like that. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bulls Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls, your overall thoughts and opinions on the game, your player of the game and stuff of that nature, ladies and gentlemen. We lost this game 111 to 119. Um, look, I will say a couple of things first. I will speak positively for the first couple of minutes of this video and then I'm going to go to the nitty gritty of this video. First and foremost, I am very thankful that Billy Donovan made changes to the starting lineup. At the end of the day, you may not agree with who was put in and who was taken out, but something had to change. Something needed, really needed, we needed deep thinking in this team. We needed to have a hard look at who is, I guess, the players that might be letting us down in the starting lineup and why our starting lineup struggled so much. But whether we like the changes or not, changes weren't necessarily that effective. It was good in some instances, it was very poor in others. But at the end of the day, we had to try something new. It might not be necessarily one person's fault. I feel like it's a whole team's fault for a lot of our mistakes. And I guess even the structure of this team as well for a lot of our mistakes. But unfortunately, we had to try something. It's as simple as that. Uh, if you want this team to work out, you're going to have to try new things. So I'm thankful Billy Donovan finally made some changes to the starting lineup. I felt like it should have been done a long time ago. But he's done them now. And that's all I really asked for from Billy Donovan. And the second thing, I will give credit to the Chicago Bulls for fighting back in this game. Again, we are versing the reigning champions in the Golden State Warriors. They've won 10 straight against the Chicago Bulls, and now they'll be happy to make that 11 straight against the Chicago Bulls, which is absolutely stunning if you think about it, considering we only versed them twice uh, every season. But nonetheless, uh, they we, we fought back. We were down by 19 points, and we ended up pulling it close to four points and we saw the Golden State Warriors get cold we saw the Bulls run out in transition and we saw some good quality defense out of this team as well but you might be asking me how do I feel about this game do I feel proud of this game or do I feel I guess a different way and unfortunately ladies and gentlemen I'm sorry if this is not the way that you want me to approach this video but the way that I feel is completely fed up with this team I'm honestly and truly in every sense of the word, I've given this team so much patience in my heart. I wanted this team to turn things around and maybe there's a small part in me that I just can't seem to find or pull out that does believe in this Bulls team um, still. But right now, all I can really feel, and this is an initial game reaction, I feel completely fed up with this team. I'm sorry, I've been saying it for a long time now. This team cannot keep going down 19 to 20 points every single game and expect to win. Yes, there is no lead that is safe in the NBA. That's a fact, especially in this day and age in the NBA. But that doesn't mean you can just go down 19 points every single game and expect to get away with it every single game. Didn't work against Phoenix, didn't work against a lot of teams that we've played against, and it didn't work against the Golden State Warriors. And although this is technically not a blowout loss, we've only lost by 8 points, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a blowout loss, and I'm not treating it as such, but it does kind of feel like a blowout loss. It feels like a team that is struggling, continuing to struggle. And I really wanted this team to turn it around. But at the end of the day, I can't find any real positive out of a game like this, except that we fought back. I can't think of positives in terms of our players. I can't think of positives in terms of our coaching staff. And another two-game losing streak on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. And it's extremely frustrating to see this team play so inconsistently. It's incredibly frustrating to see this team just struggle to the point in which they're struggling. And I can't really hold in my 
frustrations anymore. The last game against the Phoenix Suns, I zoned out. I completely and utterly just detached from the game, even though I was still watching it, because it's my job to still watch it at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, so I can do these game reactions as good as I can. This game, I was emotionally invested because the Bulls kept on coming back and they kept on fighting. I think of the energy and the effort that we put into this game against Golden State, and even though we were down by 19, and even though the energy wasn't matched for all four quarters, that was probably the best energy game I've seen in a long time, ladies and gentlemen. I saw the Bulls scramble. I saw the Bulls help. I saw the Bulls um, go out to three-point shooters and stuff like that. And there were a couple of three-point shooting um, players on the, on the Golden State Warriors team that went extremely cold because of that. But again, for whatever reason, we're just not good. We're not a good team, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm coming to that realization now. And again, I've I think I've lost all pretty much all hope on this team. I've lost all hope in the players. I've lost all hope in the coaching staff. And I really feel at this point, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. You might think this is too short term to really discuss this, whatever. This is how I feel and I can't change that now, ladies and gentlemen. I can't just all of a sudden flip a switch and say, yeah, you know what? I trust this team again. It just doesn't work like that for me. At this point, I feel like everybody should be on the trading block. I think there is no person that should be exempt for a trade right now, and I think changes need to be made. We've seen the Bulls commit to Billy Donovan right now. Whether that's the right choice or the wrong choice, I personally don't agree. I think everybody at this point should not be safe from their job on this team. But at, at the end of the day, they've committed to Billy Donovan. So if you want Billy Donovan to be successful as the head coach of the Chicago Bulls, there has to be a better team around around Billy Donovan if he wants to succeed here. We're going to make things much easier for Billy Donovan. And unfortunately, it's not easy for Billy Donovan. It's not easy for the players. And everything just seems to be on the downside for the Chicago Bulls. Now, you also might be thinking, wait till Lonzo Ball comes back. Let's see how this team does by then. How many blowouts have we seen the Chicago Bulls have already this year? The Cavs? Um, again, I probably will forget one like I did in the last game reaction. The Cavs, the Pelicans, the Nuggets, the Suns. There are so many, ladies and gentlemen. There's so many to count. And I feel this game, it feels like a blowout loss in all honesty. But I know it technically isn't. But we've seen so many times this Bulls team just continue to try and do the impossible. They're trying to be a hero team, ladies and gentlemen. There are only so many times you could do comeback wins. I think one of them was against Boston. But outside of that, you can't always do it and expect to get away with it, ladies and gentlemen. It just doesn't work. Even the buzzer beater against Orlando, we were down by so much um, in that game and we're fighting back. And yes, we did well, but Orlando had the lead for most of that game and they deserve the win. There are so many games you can list. You can, so many games you can find and say, this Bulls team had to come back in this game to try and win it. This Bulls team was down by double digits in this game to try and come back and win. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work. And there are so many signs. And I'll probably talk more about this in another video because I don't want to drag on. There are so many signs from the coaching staff, from the front office, from the players, from the coaching staff. There's so many worrying signs that I feel like at this point, everybody has to be at fault. And I think there has to be major changes made. I think our three-point shooting today was fine, but not consistent. It's never been a consistent three-point shooting team. And if you want DeMar DeRozan to work in this team, if you want Zach Levine to work in this team, I'm sorry, you need more three-point shooting on this team. The team that we have is not going to cut it in terms of the three-point shots. And there might see, be some harsh decisions that have to be made on who gets traded on this team to bring three-point shooting in. But at the same time, again, We've got roster spots that we could definitely use, um, wave and bring in three-point shooting as well. So again, the fault of everybody, ladies and gentlemen. And at this point, I am truly fed up. I know a lot of people might not feel the way that I feel. I know a lot of people will still be patient with this team. That's fine. I'm still going to be happy when we win. I want to support this team. With all the fiber of my being, I want to support this team. But that's how I feel. As a Bulls fan, as someone that's been watching every single game this year, I think there are too many signs to ignore now, ladies and gentlemen. I think that our very inconsistent quarters is too hard to ignore. Our turnovers, too hard to ignore. Our offense being so stagnant, too hard to ignore. Team shooting career percentages from three from the three-point line from game to game, too hard to ignore. Seeing Devin Booker, a guy that is very, very good at the end of the day, I'm not discrediting him, but having one of the easiest games of his life and drop 51 points, too hard to ignore. These things are too hard to ignore. Our inconsistency in general is too hard to ignore. And at this point, 
you have to face it head on. I personally do not have any faith in this team anymore. It's not just Billy Donovan that I don't have faith in because I can't put every single problem on Billy Donovan's shoulders. It can't just be his fault that this team is struggling the way that it is or that all the big three can't seem to have good games together or that the bench from time to time has strong games and some, di and some disappointing games or the fact that we see Kobe White shoot great one game and then get little to no minutes the next game. Not all of that can be on the coaching staff. Not all of that can can be on the players either. Everybody is going to be at fault in terms of this situation and therefore I have really lost faith in every single one of the players on this team. And I think everybody should be open for a trade. I think if there's a good trade for Demar at this point, I I'm not opposed to it. I'm not going to I'm not going to push for it. I'm not going to say hashtag trade everybody every single video but if there's a good trade available for one of our guys whether they're a great player, young talent or the, our best player, I don't care. If there's a good trade available, I'm really, really thinking the Bulls should consider making some heavy changes to this team and trying again. Whether that's going and competing this season, trade maybe, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to give examples, but trade one of our best players for another great player and try something different. Or if it's rebuilding again, I don't know. But I don't think this team has enough to get it done. I think we just don't play well together. I think the experiment has failed. And I don't think Lonzo Ball coming back will save all of our problems. I think he'll make us better. Don't get me wrong. I think Lonzo Ball is a great player. But he doesn't fix everything that we have. He doesn't fix our stagnant offense because we were stagnant with Lonzo Ball as well. Because he's not always the ball handler on this team. Simple as that. We were stagnant everywhere in terms of this team. And our defense was really strong with Lonzo Ball. I will not say that it wasn't. But again... There's too many problems, in my opinion, for one player to fix. There has to be a real shift in, in I guess, the mentality of this team. And there has to be a real shift in players, in my opinion, on this team as well. It's harsh. It's harsh to say. Because I like a lot of players on this team. I really, really do. But they just don't seem to play that well together. And even when they do, it's not consistent enough for us to be believers in this team. Or at least for me to be a believer in this team. That's how I feel. And this game really opened my eyes in that way. Because as good as we were playing on the defensive end, as, in my opinion, Vucevic had a great game today. I thought he played tremendously well. And when Vucevic plays well, there's a high chance that other players will play well as well because he's a willing passer and he's a very good passer at the center position. But even when Vucevic plays well, there are other guys that just struggle on this team. We can't seem to get a consistent run of games where there are constantly good performers on this team. So we've got to make some changes. It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I feel. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to change my mind on that. I truly don't know. I'm just trying to be honest. Again, I know a lot of people will hate me for saying that. And that's fine. But if I go against my honesty, if I go against what I think, then what does that make me? I could be hated if you want me to be hated. That is what it is. I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree with my point of views all the time. But if that's how I feel, that's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to express. And I'm not going to hide that just because there are other people that don't feel the same way as I do and stuff like that. My head is scrambling, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really all over the place. But let's go into the must improve. Um, to be honest, at this point, I feel like... I always should give this must improve to the whole team because it's mainly a whole team problem. I am going to pick DeMar DeRozan though. That might be a surprising one to you guys, ladies and gentlemen. But DeMar DeRozan was extremely poor in that first half of the game. And yes, he did pick things up in the second half. But in the crunch time, he got three blocked, uh, three sh blo uh, shots blocked on him, which is not... Not very DeMar DeRozan-esque, I guess you could say. And his first half was absolutely horrific. And in my opinion, he is mainly at fault for this loss, in all honesty. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm not saying he's the only reason, but he's part of it. He's probably a big reason why we lost this game. My player of the game is Nikola Vucevic. I always felt like Vucevic would have a good game in this timeout. I've been saying it for a couple of days now, if you've been watching this video. I think the matchups and the way that Golden State plays would have fit very well into Nikola Vucevic's hands. And although it wasn't the game that I thought it would be for Nikola Vucevic, he was mainly a three-point shooter in today's game. I really thought he was going to go out into the post and dominate from there. He didn't. He really, really didn't. And that's another critique I'm going to give to this Bulls team. We need to see Vucevic in the post. And very rarely do you see Vucevic in the post. But I'm Unfortunately, um, outside of that, or I guess fortunately, he had a great game everywhere else. He was a good three-point shooter, good mid-range shooter, uh, good from the corners, stuff like that. He had a solid game, in my opinion. Uh, the Bulls record, I believe, is 9-13. And, and 
again, I, I was saying at the start of the year, let's see where this team is 20 games in. We are, I believe now, 22 games into this season, if my math is correct. I'm not a mathlete, ladies and gentlemen. But we are 22 games into the season and look where we are. We're inconsistent. We don't perform well for all four quarters. We're a team that always gives up leads. We're a team that, uh, for in terms of deficits, we we try to come back from a deficit close to every single game. We call, I call us the inconsistent bulls. I call us the comeback bulls. And we want our coach to get fired. We want some of these players to get traded. At the end of the day, everybody feels differently. But for the majority, there's always someone that has something to say negatively on this team. There's not a lot of positive positivity going around. I really thought that game against Boston and the game against Milwaukee would have really been turning points for this team. And we're desperately in need for a turning point on this team. But it doesn't seem to have worked, ladies and gentlemen. And harsh reality... It's probably kicking in now. I think a lot of people were very optimistic about this team coming into the year. People called us a top four team. People called us a team that could fight for even a top three team in, in, in the East. A lot of people think we could go past the first round. But everybody outside of this team's fan base thought we were going to be a playing team. And at this point, if we continue to play like this, we might not even be a playing team at this point. So the Bulls have to step it up. But even if they do, I'm still not sure how much faith I can have in this team just based on how poorly they've really started this year. We're a quarter into the season, ladies and gentlemen, and we've seen a bunch of complaints and a bunch of miserable times for this Bulls team. So it is what it is. I will always be honest with you guys, whether you like to hear it or not. That's just how I am. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. I really wish I could be positive, man. I really do wish I could be so. And I feel like people know me for being positive. I feel like that's how, at least from my perspective, for some of the comments that I get, a lot of people like my positivity. They like to hear me rant from time to time, and I do give the occasional rant. But I think people love my optimism. I think people love my positivity. But at this point, I just can't feel that. I can't feel that emotion in me. And maybe in a couple of hours' times, I can settle down and think more clearly. But right now, that's how I feel. And I don't know if I'll be able to feel differently in a couple of hours' time or not. I'll talk more about it in the next video, I guess. So with all that being said, have a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.